Hey guys, uh, in this session today we'll talk about SAP Central Finance initial load process. So initial load is one of the important component uh, for any project uh, basically. So we'll talk about that what initial load is all about, how, how, it, how, it, how it works, what is the process. So before we jump to initial load, let's understand that just a quick recap of Central Finance. Central Finance is basically a data replication from non-SAP to or SAP systems to S4 HANA system and it's a do no disruption approach towards implementation of S4 HANA. Uh, data is transferred from SLT and there are several limitations as well in central finance as we talked about in another video. Uh, and it basically works with mappings, uh, code and value mapping uh, so that when the data is posted in, sent in source system, it gets replicated to S4 HANA system based on certain mapping rules and transformation processes. So keep, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, there are, there is a video on mapping, there is a video on central payment, there is a video on functionality overview. So just, uh, you can subscribe to the channel and feel free to, to you know, comment on the videos, uh, share the videos. So let's understand what is initial load. So initial load is used to transfer postings from particular period for, for example, current year into the source system, from source system to S4 HANA. So how it works actually. So there are two things. One is initial load and another is on real time replication or online replication, we say. For example, my fiscal year for the organization is April to March, for example, 1st April to 31st March. Now we are going live with, with the central finance on let's say 1st September or 1st October, for example. So now what happened is, from April to September, 1st April to 30th September, the data is already posted in the source system. And from 1st October, my requirement is that data will be re replicated online from the source system to S4 HANA system. Now there is a business requirement, which, which is generally for mostly, for especially for the US organization, where for the IRS reporting and other reportings, uh, you need to have the whole year data in one system. So, so now from October, all the data is available in S4 HANA, but what to do with April to September data? So that data can be replicated from an ECC system or any non-SAP system to S4 HANA, and that replication is called initial load. So we are loading a bunch of documents. It can be thousands, it can be millions, depending on company requirement. We are loading those documents as a migration activity, as a project migration activity when we go live. So we load all those documents from the source system to S4 HANA system. So, and then from 1st October, the actual process starts. So in the S4 HANA system, you have all the data actually from April to the whole year. So that's known as initial load. And as I mentioned, online replication. So from 1st October, as you said, your requirement is to have online replication. So any document being posted in ECC will immediately be replicated to S4 HANA system. And whenever I say ECC, it means any source system. So just take it as any source system. So to start the replication, the initial load needs to be executed even if it is the POC. So when you do the POC, when we do the POC for the organization for central finance and we try to show the replication, it is a mandate to have a uh, initial load executed. So we don't want to ex execute, you know, the initial load and takes time and then put all the lot of data in the system. So what we can do is for the POC, we can run the empty initial load. With that, it's a technical step, the initial load is completed. And then once that is done, we can start the online and the real time replication from the system. Okay, so let's see what it is. So let's talk about sequence of initial load. So the sequence of initial load is very, very important actually. So let's understand what this is all about. So initial load of cost object mapping. So because any FI document you post, uh, most most of them have any cost object, right? Any cost center, internal order, project, project or anything. So it is good to have those cost object replicated first and then you replicate your accounting documents. So the steps are basically initiate initial load for cost object mapping. Then you extract the load data for initial load. You tell system, okay, I want for for this company code, for this, this is the period, these are, these are the company code. Then you monitor the extraction. Then you post the initial load into S4 HANA, then you monitor the postings. So then once FI postings are done, then you do the initial load for CO postings. 
So on the right hand side you can see there is a menu. Uh, it says initial load execution for selected company codes. Similarly, there is an initial load execution for all company codes. It is always good to have it by selection so that you understand and you monitor what is being transferred, what you did and what is happening. Key prerequisites of initial load are all mapping should be completed, very important because otherwise things will fail. You have a GL account in, in ECC system and you don't have a mapping in S4 system. When you do the initial load, your GL mapping, your GL mapping will fail and your, actually the initial load will fail. Logical systems are defined. You understand what is source system, what is your target system and clearing and substitutions accounts are defined. So take, it, take this statement as of now as it is, clearing and substitution accounts. We will talk about this in, in next few minutes, you know, what these accounts are. Initial load of cost objects. So what cost objects are existing in your source, source system? It will be replicated to your S4HANA system and accounting posting, as I mentioned, are generally attached to the cost object. So it is important to replicate cost objects. And initial load for cost object is carried through SAP SLT. That's why we have a, in SLT, we have two tables being replicated, AUFK and COBK. And it is recommended to do initial load before you execute the actual load. And it is also important to apply filters so that you know you only take the relevant data, not just everything and anything in your source system. So what is needed, just take that to ensure you do you uh, spend less time, you spend less efforts, and you have less work in reconciliations. Then we do initial load of FI and CO postings. This is any FI posting initial load is done through customizing in central finance. There is a menu in CFIN. Uh, system in S4HANA side where you do the initial load and the CU initial load is done through SLT as I mentioned and it is recommended to transfer only balances from the previous periods the replication for each historic document is very tedious and the time consuming task so you cannot just have drop documents you know you one for one million documents or two million documents for last 10 months you are just replicating everything I recommend it to take balance but yeah documents is also doable I just mentioned substitution and clearing accounts. What these accounts means is there are two in the steps of initial load. So in the first step, all balances related to recon account, like vendors, customers are transferred to their assigned substitution account. So if you have a vendor account balance, let's say 100,000, you transfer all that balance to the substitution accounts. And the next step, you have open item being posted to recon accounts and the off offset is posted to substitution account. So once the initial load is complete, the balance of the substitution account should be zero because in two steps above, step one and step two, your substitution account should be zero. And same is for migration account. The migration clearing account should be defined for each company code and once balances are loaded, it should be zero. For example, you do a trial balance migration, you have debits, you have credits. So what you do is you debits, credit should be clearing account and then you credits, the debit should be clearing account. So at the end, your debits and credit for all the relevant GL account balance match and that migration account gets to zero. So same thing we do here, clearing and substitution account. So the way we defined here is we have a menu in central finance system. We say define clearing and substitution accounts. And we have like this for buy company code, we define what is my migration clearing account. And on the, or here, if we come to this window, define substitution account, we double click this folder and buy company code, you can define the substitution account as well. So there is this, this configuration setting is there under the cent, under central finance CFIN IMG. And then you have initial load and in the initial load settings, you have clearing and substitution accounts. So don't forget to do that when you do the initial load. And also just to iterate, don't forget to subscribe the channel Nitin Gupta SAP for all lot of several videos. Okay, so reset initial load. So sometime what happened, we run the initial load, something goes wrong and we don't want to reconcile. It happens during the POC period. So we can, we may need to delete that initial load. So there is an option or a button in system where we can do initial load reset or initial load delete. And it, it's very obvious, you know, we, we need a lot of time when we do, we are doing the POC. And also it is important to look at the below notes. Uh, which for it, which are important for initial load. Uh, some are some are consulting and some are actually the error corrections, like error reset initial load not possible, reset initial load for table C fin C U add, and then correct initial load reset. So it is important to always refer to the relevant SAP notes and the new version so that you get the right Im right information at the right time. So if you want to delete the initial load, so you have a menu option initial load for financial accounting and then. At the last, you see the initial load is there. 
and when you delete you have option to what you want to delete you want to delete by load group you select the delete option and you mention the load groups so load group is basically you make a groups of company code okay like i have 50 company code worldwide i'm saying 10 company codes of us are part of one load group we create a load group so on the top you see here define lo initial load group so we can define load group by company code and it is good to have those company code part of same text procedures or same text settings you know for reconciliations or technical purposes so you can delete an initial load by load group or you can delete anything and everything if you said delete all it will delete everything then comes to reconciliation so there is a standard transaction fins underscore c fin underscore load underscore comp which means comparison which is like you know the screen looks like this matching report for expected postings in cu and actual postings so you have logical center system you select company code and you put the GL account or you put the document date and you execute this report so it gives you the headers like below company code document number GL account business area document date and all the fields comes and uh, it shows you what was supposed to be loaded from ECC or and what is loaded in S4. So it's a reconciliation. Anything missing is highlighted in red. So you have a real picture why it fails and then you can see the errors. So know what, what happened, what why it fails when it failed. It is also important to understand, you know, we have a testing process uh, for initial load. So we have a testing before go live and then we have a go live. So it is very understandable very key area actually to test and ensure that you do the real uh, dry run of the initial load so the recommended options are in first scenario you have your test source system with the test CFN system so you have both the systems as test you migrate the data this will ensure to understand you know your configurations are correct your mappings are correct all those things are correct the second scenario is you have to it's not a scenario it's a step basically productive source system with test CFN system so you take all the data from your production ECC system and you load into central finance test system. That will ensure that your data quality is correct. All your latest mappings are correct. Might be your, in step one, your uh, source system of ECC might be, you know, of previous refresh and you, it does not have the latest data. And you have a lot of new GLs, the new master data in the latest last from last one or two years so in scenario two what you can do is you can have a real productive system connected ECC connected to test s for HANA and you can see the real how the data quality is working what all you need to work upon and once you're very happy and satisfied with scenario two then it actually goes with productive core source system with productive central finance system so it is very important to understand that you know testing should be done in these two scenarios before we go live so that you know we work we at first step we check the configurations and the settings technical setting then there's step two we check the data quality what's or how the real data is behaving so it is important to understand initial load is very very important process and another important key is you have a YouTube channel free videos are there for mostly for central finance all latest videos are coming up I'm going to add a few more videos on the latest topics uh, so feel free to visit the channel subscribe listen to the videos and if you have any comment just feel free to you know drop a note there or there is my email id mentioned put you can drop a quick note to my email id if you have any questions or you are looking for part, any particular topic or any anything any help from my side feel free to do that and thank you so much for listening stay tuned we will having we'll be coming with more videos uh, very soon thank you